waiting for the next special meeting and all that. Or if, it, if the worship is on point or the teaching is on point. All of those are those, those are good things that you, we use. Amen. Those are kickstands, I guess you could say. <laughs> it helps prop us, prop us up. It's sometimes props, but if we don't get as passionate about external things internally, we're going to be deficient. We're not going to be healthy. We're not going to be able to migrate, move, transition as God would have us to do anyhow. Another thing we said, one thing is for sure, when, when thinking about religion, you never have to worry about adjusting your beliefs or mindsets. Sure. I wonder if it had have, have there been any agitation here or the inability to adapt <laughs> because of our mindsets. You know, it's kind of hard to, you know, you some of us was raised around church and at least a good amount of time. Even if you weren't raised in the church, you, you've been among church people. <laughs> and um, you become accustomed to certain cultures and certain uh, uh, yeah, cultures and policies and things like how churches handle their business internally, you know, and, and how they hate, you know, like Koji got their own way, the Baptists got their own way, the denomination. Every church has its own culture. And then if you get too grounded in a particular demeanor as it relates to church or temperament, then it, sometimes it becomes that weight. Not just the sin, but the weight won't allow you to transition or make the adjustments as necessary. Am I right? Sure. Because you can't adjust because your mind, your belief system, that's why we talked about repentance, is necessary. you got to repent because you can't have a renewed mind without repenting. And you can't adopt or adjust your mindset without it. And religion won't allow that to happen. So if you find that resistance and agitation... And, and you know, and it feels like you're in a season that's like, man, and it's like iron sharpening iron. And <laughs> you get what I'm saying? That God is addressing your mindset, your belief system. I was talking to Elder Gary, you know, this, uh, couple, well, it might have been day for yesterday, might have been yesterday, talking about the roots systems. We got root systems. Yeah. You know, one of the four uh, uh, grounds that Jesus talked about in Mark 4 and Matthew 13, he's talking about. One of them had to do, I think, stony ground didn't have no root. When you, you know what I'm saying? And those, you know, the root is talking about our thinking. You know, in the natural, you need good roots in order to get nutrients. Yes. Am I yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. If that root is, if a, is, if a plant is pulled from the roots, then it can't get its nutrients, nutrients from the ground. Yeah. And that's why sometimes we need the axe to go at the root of some things so that our old belief systems can be removed. So we can grow thereby and be healthy and strong and vibrant and full of vitality and excited when we come in the house of God. I think we should be the most happiest and excited folks around. I mean, I think because of the because of the water level in this house, when we come in, we know that we're not coming to get something fabricated or some knockoff or bootleg stuff. We're coming to get it from the throne of God. It's not repackaged. I don't care who you tune into, who you listen to. We all got our favorite preachers. But there are some things God has given us tailor-made. Yes. Every church should be autonomous. Find confidence in your own identity. Amen. And promote it. Amen. Remember, this is September. Right. And I, I told you guys what we need, need to do in September. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the second week. I'm going to see if we're going to do that. But anyhow, I get back to my message. So we got to adjust our belief. Another thing religion does so well is it neutralizes our heart. That even when God speaks to us, we He can't even penetrate our heart. I'm gonna move on, but these are some of the things I shared. Am I right? God started challenging. You know how many folks came to me and told me God gave them a dream or God said to them? Yes, sir. And guess how many still are in the same place? Yes, Whole, bunch. <laughs> Whole bunch. Whole bunch. We shouldn't be neutralized. When God prompts us, and you know, 
God is not limited on how he communicates to you. The only limitation is my interpretation. We can't put him in the box. He don't have to speak to you on Sunday. He can speak to you during the week. He don't have to use King James language. That's right. Amen. He can speak to you through a movie. Amen. Amen. I get a lot from Labos, Flores. Anybody ever been over Labos, Flores, right next to McDonald's on West Street? Mm -hmm. They change out every 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 month. I like going over there when I go to McDonald's and look at it. I can get nice little quotes. <laughs> you just gotta look around. Yeah. You gotta look around. The heavens declare his glory. Look around. Yes. You know what I'm saying? His handiwork is all around us. Yep. But we like to congest them and put them in a and put it on their Sundays. <laughs> you go into the house of God, but he's God today. He's going to speak to my pastor. <laughs> then we tone deaf other six days. No, 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 no. What if he can speak to you on Saturdays? You come in on Sundays and I bring confirmation. What you talking about? A Holy Ghost? Oh, you talking about a jerk? Something going to pull something up out of your gut. No! Thank God I would just, you know, you, you, you may not be at the same address, but you could be on the block. Yeah. We want, see, most of us want verbatim. I don't need a verbatim word. I need a general word. Just the word that can bring me on the block. I may not know what address he's going, but I'm on the block. And you just as happy, I get just as happy when I'm on the block. Yes, yes. Because I know I'm headed in the right direction. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. We can't have our heart neutralized. Yes. We gotta keep that heart with all diligence. We gotta ask the Spirit, search me and see if there be any wicked way in me. Because yes. there are some certain things in our life that could, could be a short circuit the plan of God. Yep. Especially our will. Yeah. What we want. Mm -hmm. The way we want it. And when we want it. Mm -hmm. And how we want it. <laughs> I'm serious. Only God has to be specific. Everybody else around us. <laughs> am I right? Yeah. We give room. <laughs> when it comes to God, then we get a little, little hissy fit. I thought you said. Right? So we get displaced aggression. Because it didn't come according to our clock. And our assessment. That's how we get neutralized. He already told us how to receive from him. Did he? Did he? Yeah, look. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to say, uh uh. They're like, uh, uh, prophet, stood, the prophet jumped right in the water. He did. He said that seven years become a little child. You can't enter the kingdom. A child is just innocent. Yes. Pure. He said, jump. If I, told, if I put, a, put a little man on top of the refrigerator and said, jump, he would get on the refrigerator and jump. He wouldn't say, Papa, you going to catch me? <laughs> he coming. You, I gotta make sure I don't turn. He coming off that very fast and furious. Coming off. Yeah. Yep. And it's up to me to be there to catch him. Yeah. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Got to get to that point where we're not neutralizing our thinking, yeah. and religion will neutralize you. Yeah. It will limit you. Because most churches don't want you to bring your brain to church. So people don't bring their... Now they got on their phone, the apps. And what we do in some churches now, <laughs> is that even though we got our apps, we, we play like we're on the phone following the past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're playing games or we keep it up on Facebook or finding out what's hot on Twitter and <laughs> hey man, instead of the service. That's what, that, I'm telling you, that's one of the things, man, Oh Lord, but we don't want to be neutralized in our in our inner man. We want our spiritual man to be in sync with the Spirit of God yes, consistently. Sir. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are 
the sons of God. Our inheritance is predicated upon our reception to the Holy Spirit and our sensitivity to the Word. Yes. Simultaneously. Because they are always bearing witness to one another. If we're going to move forward and become healthy in the things of God. Most churches are profound, but they're not proficient. Most churches are eloquent, but they're not effective. Yeah. We're inundated with, with vocabulary. But our vocation is crying out for reformation. Yes. The expression that's necessary for us to grow in the things of God. I can't get away from it because I'm doing my study on migratory. I, I wish I could just go there right now and help y'all out, man. There's some scripture that says that's plain with Paul penned to the church over and over and over. It, it is supposed to be in our lives. We're not supposed to be stuck. It's even wired in our spiritual DNA. Outward man perishes. Yes. What happened? The inward man what? Renew. Day by day. I hold God accountable to that word. So God, you know what? I expect my mind to be renewed this morning. Sure. Amen. I've read your scriptures. It says daily you load me with benefits. I read it with, with where uh, Jesus said in the in the uh, Lord's Prayer, we call it the Lord's Prayer. Anyhow, when He told us that our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be Thy name, right? Yeah. What does He say? And I will be. Uh -huh. Then He said what? On earth. In, yeah, in heaven. And He said, "Give us." I was trying to get them ahead of you. Give us what? Every uh, our weekly bread. <laughs> our Sunday bread. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, no, daily is not Sunday. All right. 